Welcome to the Tuesday Jukebox. Listening to the Tuesday Jukebox, broadcasting to you live from Speakeasy Studios in an undisclosed location somewhere in downtown White River Junction, Vermont. Back at long last, off the mountain after a bit of a hiatus due to some winter weather. Yeah, that's right. Which et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Moved into spring. Yes. We have from Orange, New Hampshire, Banjo Wizard himself, none other than Steve Henning. Together we are. Ninja, ninja Wizard. Wizard. That's right. I am your host, Jacob Breitbach, Fiddle Ninja. We have a special last-minute guest here. We booked this show yes. Sunday afternoon, yes. barely 48 hours to get all of our ducks in a row, and we are really excited quack, to have quack, quack. Lisa Piccarello here this evening. She is a singer-songwriter, um, also band member of the Tricksters, and she is here tonight to share her music on her upcoming new album yes. that is available for pre pre-order on Kickstarter, and there are links in the comments below. So stay tuned. We're going to play one more song, and then we're going to bring Lisa down to play some guitar and some keyboard, and we'll do a little chat with her later and yeah. then some more tunes. So thank you for tuning in, folks. If you are watching the live broadcast or the rebroadcast, please hit the share button right now. Tell all your friends. Both of them. Yeah. Yes. Tell both your friends you're watching this right now, and they should also watch this live stream or the rebroadcast. Especially if you're on YouTube, you want to go hit the subscribe button there on the Here in the Valley YouTube channel. So without further ado, we're going to head into another banjo fiddle tune in the spirit of St. Patty's Day. St. Patty's Day. We are doing the tunes that we consider to be somewhat <laughs> Irish. I think there's a triplet in this tune. There might be. Yeah, yeah. Fisher's Horn Pipe. Fact, <laughs> if it was in the right key, that I'd be able to do that too, but I won't. <laughs> All right, here we go. Come on, man. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. 
one. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, folks. That was Ninja Wizard, my friend Steve Hennig on the banjo. Thank you, and we'll see you a little bit. You betcha. We're going to bring our new friend of the jukebox down here. I've known her for a little while here in the community. Uh, we're going to bring her out from behind the curtain. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a large jukebox welcome to Lisa Piccarillo. Thank you. Hey. And while you get settled in here, I'll remind folks that you're here to listen to Lisa's music that is available for pre-order now. Yes on Kickstarter. I got my pre-order last night as I was doing my research. Yeah, well, you know, a good host has to do the due diligence. And on your sure. own birthday. That's right. Well, I bought myself a present. What can I say? <laughs> I'm just sad it's not available until 2023. Well, it could be the end of this year. If oh, all goes well. This year just started. I know. Right. Yes. Well, it could be the end of this year. Okay. We'll see. Well, I'm going to hear them this evening. A bunch of them, I yes, assume? Yes. At good. least four. All right. <laughs> No further ado, Lisa Piccarillo. Thank you. Please give it up for Jacob and Steve. Ninja Warrior. Ninja Wizard, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> thank you for being here, and thank you, everyone at home. Um, I'll play you a song, and then we'll chit chat a little bit. This is from my first record.
That's called You Never Say. And that's from my first record, which came out nearly 14 years ago. And since that time, I was in a band called Hotels and Highways, had two records with them, got to go out on the road with them all over the country. Great experience with uh, Aaron Sidney and Pat Couples. Um, I also got married, renovated a house with my husband, had a baby, got some new jobs, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, all of that sort of factors into the story of my next record, which if you're watching, you can hear that story, view that story on the Kickstarter uh, campaign video. And I'll tell you a little more about the record in a little bit. Um, but a major theme was that I hadn't written for a very long time. Um, and writers, when they don't write, get sad. <laughs> um, writers, when they do write, can be sad too, but <laughs> they get more sad when they're not writing. Um, <clears throat> this was one of the only songs that I wrote in between like 2014 and 2020. Um, and I wrote this when my son Luca was about a year old. Um, his name means the light. Um, and that's when I sort of knew that I could be drawing the writing back out of myself. Uh, when I sat down to write this. So this is for my Luca, the light. Shine for you 
Thank you. So that song will be on the next record. <laughs> it won't be quite like that. Um, I'm, I'm aiming to make a lot bigger noise than I have in the past and than I am making currently in this room. Many more instruments, many more people contributing. Um, so I hope to have it enlarged with strings and all the instruments that we can have on it. Um, I'd love to play you a cover song if that's allowed. Is that within the rules? All right. Um, I think that we all found something to cling to uh, in the past couple years, um, especially when we were in the isolation. And um, for me, one of those things was this particular record by Phoebe Bridgers. I was a little bit late to the Phoebe Bridgers party. Apparently she's big with the kids these days, but you know, I was not really paying attention. But when I found this record, I just, it, it floored me. Um, and this is a song from that record called Chinese Satellite. She has a very big sound with all the instruments, but I've also heard her play this one really small, so that's kind of what it's going to be like tonight. It's by Phoebe Bridgers. Thank you. 
I'm gonna switch to piano. So one of my great pre-pandemic gifts was a uh, piano getting moved into our studio space at home. Um, and as you may hear in the story of the Kickstarter uh, new record campaign, if you um, are kind enough to check out that video um, during the sad times, <laughs> the collective sad times and my own personal sad times, which happened to coincide, um, and realizing that I really hadn't done any writing and really needing to get back to that, I started getting up at 5, 5.30 every morning and retreating to my studio space, um, which I was very fortunate to have a space to go to and a lovely piano to sit at. Um, and at first it was a lot of sitting and crying and then some dancing and stretching and singing other people's songs. Um, but it wasn't very long um, of putting in that sort of commitment uh, before my own songs started coming to me. Um, and so this record is largely piano based just because that's what was inspiring to me at the time. Um, and I wanted to sort of get out of my acoustic guitar box that I had been in for a long time. Um, and also during the collective sad times, I got very mad about the ridiculous um, societal restrictions that are placed on people, um, not the kind of restrictions that uh, show kindness and respect to one another like we all experienced during the pandemic, but rather the restrictions that don't allow us to really be who we are and radiate ourselves, which is one of the reasons why the title of the record is Radiate. Um, and I was thinking about women and marginalized groups and how for some people, no matter what they do, it's never enough and they're not safe to be who they are. And so this was one of the songs that I wrote at that time, um, thinking about um, all the magic that each of us has to share uh, and how we should all feel safe to share it. So this is called Enough. And it's for anyone who has never felt enough. Can you hear it okay? We're good. <clears throat> what keeps you If they keep you numb and half asleep and feed you new concerns, you'll never know your power. Once upon a time you loved it all, you'd stop to smell the flowers, but this world won't wait for beauty. 
Thank you. So this is another one that's going to be on the new record. Um, this is metaphorically about a love affair between the moon and the ocean. It's called Last Star. When I need to find them 
recorded and it has an enormously beautiful sound I'm very very excited about. Um, the next song I'm going to play is the title track for the new record called Radiate and I thought I should bring my doodle for you. I worked at Stella's in Lyme for many years and one night uh, at a slow shift this is actually on the back of a specials menu here. <laughs> I was daydreaming, as I do. Um, and I had this vision. It looked just like this. Female form, arms raised, backlit by the sun. Um, and the word radiate came to me. And, you know, we all have our inner critics. And my inner critic sort of said, radiate? What do you mean? Like a heater? What does that mean? <laughs> and I shut her down because she didn't know what she was doing. And I saved that because I knew I got these full body chills and I said, that's gonna be my next record, this Radiate. And that was in 2014. <laughs> so it took me a while to get there, um, but it's almost sweeter now because I have realized that I couldn't have, rec I couldn't have written this record then, um, before I became a mom before the dark times, before any of the things that have happened over the last uh, many years. Um, so when I sat down to start writing again in the fall of 2020 and had my early morning practice going on, um, I was reading Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, and she has this beautiful idea, um, theory about how ideas themselves are disembodied creatures and we share our planet with ideas and they come knocking at your door and if you're not ready for them when they come they might just go and find somebody else because um, they have this will to be manifested by a human collaborator Elizabeth Gilbert says um, so I believe that because I captured the idea, that the idea was patient in waiting for me. Um, and I realized during one of my early morning sessions that the song I was writing was Radiate. Um, so I would like to play that for you now. And this is uh, one of the songs that you'd hear in the Kickstarter video. Um, and I demonstrate the difference between sort of a bare bones piano vocal arrangement uh, and what it sounds like when it's really got all the oomph behind it, all the instruments um, and all the extra love. Um, so I'm really excited to have that big sound. This is called Radiate, and I would like to thank it, the idea, for waiting for me. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? It's hard to hold, it's heavy.
hear the battle there between me and my inner critic, right? Hush, hush now. Um, so I've got a couple more. Jacob, yeah. do you want to talk now? Yeah. Ooh, can't wait. We're going to have a little hot seat moment here. <laughs> I'm not sure who's in the hot seat more, me I or you. I don't know. Thank um, you so much for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank so you. Lovely. A round of so applause so for our Thank you for coming. Um, geez, yeah, you've done such a great job uh, just talking about your music and the album so far, uh, but I still have some some questions. Okay. Um, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna go get all over the map here. First is... Uh, you know Jim Carrey, of course. I mean, of course, you, know, yes. you don't know him personally. Yeah, I, no, but, not but you personally, know who he is. no. Um, are you aware of this show on Showtime called Kidding? No. Oh, well, everyone should go check out Kidding. Okay. Because um, it features a Mr. Rogers like character named Mr. Piccarillo. Really? Mr. Pickles. <laughs> Mr. Pickles. Mr. Pickles. One of my own. I'm pretty sure it's Mr. Piccarillo. It's, it's, if it's not Mr. Piccarillo, it's very, very close. All right. Um, so I. I thought we'd get that in the pre-chat okay. today, but we were so busy getting prepared that <laughs> I just sprung it on you. So check that. It's it's a kid's show, okay. but kidding. The, kidding. It's right. it's a kid's show. It's about a kid's show, but there's not necessarily so much. It's it's a little, it's a little heavy. It's a little dark comedy. So anyway, back All to right. you. <laughs> um, would love to know a little bit about where your background comes from. Like you were a kid musician or an adult musician. Where did you learn all these skills? <laughs> I mean, I've been singing. I've been singing for a long time. Oh, okay. Um, we had a studio space when I was a kid. It was a converted garage. My father is a musician and also a photographer. Um, and we had this just empty studio space he would use for his photography and he would jam with his buddies in there. Um, and I used to go out there. I was an only child until I was six years old. So like I had a lot of free time on my hands, right? Um, and I would go out there, I would listen to my Whitney Houston, mm -hmm. I had my hairbrush, or he actually had like de <laughs> defunct microphones that he would let me use too, well, which was really exciting. Um, and I would just belt out the tunes. I danced a lot when I was a kid too. So there was often a combination of the yeah, two yeah, things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I sang a lot in choirs growing up. I started writing songs when I was about 12. Um, I never really had formal training in any of the things. I mean, choir was great for my voice, obviously, and I learned to read some music that way, but never really took one-on-one -on -one lessons or anything. Okay. Just loved to sing. So you mentioned Whitney Houston, but oh, yeah. she, was, she, was a key, she wasn't a keyboard player. Who are I, oh. I, I have some guesses as to some influences, but I want to hear. Oh, ah, I want to hear you first. <laughs> you tell me when you're when you're songwriting or you're jamming on some keyboard player songwriters. Who are you listening to? Um, my my two Sarahs, my two beloved Sarahs, Sarah McLaughlin uh -huh. from the olden days. Uh -huh. My olden days, my my adolescence, you know, just chock full of angst. Um, all those 90s alt rock babes okay. I loved. Yeah. Um, a little Tori Amos. Um, I heard but, that. But I Sarah, definitely heard that. Sarah McLaughlin's okay. at the top of the list. Um, and my modern Sarah, Sarah Bareilles. Oh, yeah. Who I love, 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 love. And awesome. she's just such a classy lady. Um, a, a real treat to see live, too. Yeah, I've loved, caught her on a couple yeah. of live streams. She's before, amazing. But I didn't see her um, so piano wise, yeah, that's who I would be. That's who I would be playing. And then in terms of guitar, I was a big Indigo Girls fan. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Lots of harmonies. Uh -huh. um, harmony. I like to say harmony is my favorite instrument because Great. I just I couldn't live without it. Yeah. And so I've done a lot of um, backing vocals for people too, but. So we have uh, a few things I knew we had in common. We both have a four-year-old. Yes. <laughs> Mine's almost five. Yours Close. Is, yes, August. getting yeah. there. That's right. So, and we need to have a mud play date soon. We really yeah. do. Now all the, the puddles. Getting warmer. Oh, mm -hmm. all them. I get my, my kid's getting stuck in mud. I have to go and like, retrieve him <laughs> one foot at a yep. time. Yeah. <laughs> Don't leave the boots behind. Oh. Yeah, he can't get muddy at all. One drop of mud is going to take the oh, whole outfit really? off. Oh, yeah. really? See, Luca is the exact opposite. The dirtier, the better. Ah, yeah, my kid. Well, I will say that, though. We took a walk down to, to Frost Park and then across the train tracks behind the recycling center and then down to the dam, and we're throwing rocks, and I thought, oh, I'll just take a little Instagram video here. I turn back, and I have a naked child at the <laughs> river <laughs> swimming in the Connecticut in the middle of March at 45 degrees. <laughs> Attaboy. That's your monster. Uh, thanks to my uh, Instagram <laughs> post, a friend of mine said, uh, that's sewer water, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. I threw him in the shower. Immune system with. bolstering. Yeah. yeah, he only got his feet. It was the, actually the glass <laughs> on the ground I was more concerned Aww. about in the immediate moment. He was fine, though. So another thing we have in common is we both launched crowdfunding campaigns yes. recently. Congratulations. Um, thanks, and you too. 
Um, I made I made the terrible mistake of watching your video before <laughs> starting <laughs> in f my editing process, and I was like, Ooh, this is brutal." So I use a lot of gifts to get through my editing foible and my what I didn't do well in videography. I had to make up for in editing. I loved your video. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, I loved your my, outtakes and oh, oh, good, the heart. The outtakes. <laughs> it was designed around the outtakes. I had. I was like, "Well, it's not going to be. I need to go funny." Um, so my wife, a wise woman, had told me you launch crowdfunding campaigns on your birthday because of all the natural, organic, virality. That Are those words we're allowed to use at this time? Yeah. But you get all that traction. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that's the case. But why are you launching your Kickstarter, which everybody should go right now? Right now. Ready eight. You can go to my website, lisapicarillo.com, yeah. or just any it's, of the things, the Facebook, the Instagram, the link is everywhere. We chatted it up. It's all over the place. By the way, we have a, a, a lot of... Picarillos and, and some Barbieros, Barbieros out there in the world. Oh, streaming in the, in live. The, in the streaming home audience? Live, yeah. I have Picarillo Barbieros. We have some folks from Maine <laughs> tuning in. They belong to me. I could, I, I guess. Say, yeah. Or Mr. Pickles. <laughs> yeah. So yes. why March right now? Are you really <laughs> seeing, like, obviously you're working on the album. Working what, on the album. So I, I mean, it was time. I, I wanted to wait until I had the songs written because asking people for their support before there were any songs felt really scary to me. But now that I have the songs, um, people, I think, don't think about because we have access to pretty much the entirety of recorded music for $9.99 a month or whatever it is for your subscription, that puts us indie musicians in kind of a challenging position because mm -hmm. it's amazing. I mean, I want to listen to all the music mm -hmm. too, but... Encanto. You know, Encanto. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but how do we pay the people that deserve right. to get paid? So really and people should know this, when they're pledging for my record, it's really not so I can pocket the money, it's so that I can pay the best people mm -hmm. to do all the instruments, do all the production, mm -hmm. mix it, master it, mm -hmm. make me look pretty on film, mm -hmm. and put it out there and promote it. Um, so I chose March 2nd because it was the new moon oh, in Pisces. I love it. And I'm a Pisces oh, rising. Oh, you are too? You know, it's just a little, I'm Pisces rising. Oh, yeah. oh right, so oh, your sun sign. Got Cancer it. sun, got Pisces it. rising. I, I didn't want to wait until my birthday in July because I want to be putting out music That's by then. March is a good time. March is People a good time. People are still at home. There's Holidays are over. Yeah. People are looking for something to do. I thought it might be just a good time to connect with people, let them know that I was up to something. And um, it seems to be going well. I'm hoping to reach uh, two-thirds funding by yeah. the end of tonight. Can we that's, do it? Yeah, that's pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah. I still have two more weeks in the campaign. So, um, and I these do... are all or nothing. All or nothing. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. I do want people to know that every little bit helps. So you can pledge for as little as $5 and there are reward tiers all the way up. If There's you some be... good value in there. Those higher tiers. I see some private concerts for There's some a private bit of a concerts, steal. Yeah. yeah. There's some behind the scenes stuff. If anybody's it's... interested in like the early demos or what my, you know, scrawly handwritten lyric stuff looks like, I can yeah. like give that to them. Um, but $15 is the, just the regular pre-order price. So you'd get the record when it comes out. Um, and $25 will get it early, whatever mm -hmm. that means. So mm -hmm. it'll be a couple months ahead mm -hmm. of the release date, mm -hmm. whenever the release date Are you going to do vinyl? Are you just gonna do I would that? love to do vinyl. So 15000 is my base goal. That's the all or nothing price. So if I don't hit that goal, we don't get any of the money pledged. Um, once we hit that goal, I'm going to say once, not when, but or if, but once we hit that goal, um, stretch goals. Yes. Are, are a Kickstarter thing, yep. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can get beyond that 15000 I would love, love, love to add vinyl. Um, I chose not to do CDs because I've got hundreds of my last record just sitting yep. around. It feels like a whole lot of plastic that I don't want to put into the world. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's anybody out there going, oh, no, I don't know how to do the digital thing, I will burn you a CD and I will mail it to you. <laughs> so just write me and I'll She's going to copy happen. you a CD, I'm but gonna she's not going to burn it like, you know, a mask or something. Right. Okay, not, no burning here. Or bras. Oh. No burning bras. Well, we're going back a couple <laughs> generations now. <laughs> well, well, this is really good. I'm so glad that we ran into each other in the hallway here in the building. How I was doing my uh, Patreon video and nice. sitting sitting in the hallway being like, oh, I didn't really get it done. I'll have to come back tomorrow. And then I ran into Lisa, who was putting up her poster for Radiate. And I was just sort of one of those, well, I 
guess I might as well say the Tuesday jukebox is upstairs, and I had been kind of meaning to get in touch with you, and I don't know how you slipped through the cracks, and I had this spot open all month for Women's History Month, and um, so it's so fortuitous. I'm so glad that you're Thank here. Thank you. And at the, a good time for you I've to I've been in out. hibernation. How would you know that I was doing anything until I started telling the world that now I'm doing things again? <laughs> good. Everybody has been in hibernation. It's time to come out. Yeah. So. Indeed. Well, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, you're playing some shows uh, with the Tricksters. Yes. Coming up. Yeah. So that's the uh, primarily '80s, '90s rock pop cover band. Which um, is how we met, by which the way. Which is how we met. That's right. You room. were doing amazing sound. Yeah. Well, um, I did sound. You did amazing sound, and you were a pleasure to work with. <laughs> Jacob Breitbach, everybody. Um, yeah. So I'm in that band with my husband Seth Barbiero and some of our dear, dear friends. A lot of great talent. Um, Something and, coming up. On the um, we are the most public thing I know about is August twentieth, which is the Worthy Burger ten year reunion or oh. ten year anniversary party that we're doing. Yeah. Um, most of our other gigs are weddings at this point, mm -hmm. so private mm -hmm. stuff. But um, yeah, tricksterbandcom If you want to check that out, August yeah, 20th. yeah, love at it. The original big outdoor burger deal. location. Yeah, oh, yeah, in love August. It. Cannot get enough of that. Place. Yeah. I mean, it's pricey, but it's worth it. It's Plus the, show. the most delicious, and you're yeah. getting the best possible burger. It's worth it. Amen. Yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> We're not sponsored by Worthy Burger. <laughs> I just have to have it. <laughs> not yet. It could happen. Tuesday Jukebox. <laughs> Anybody out there in Worthy Burger or Fiddlehead? <laughs> um, and any other solo shows or any other shenanigans planned other than... Child rearing. <laughs> so Are you maple child rearing. sapping? Are you sugar boiling? Not personally, but I very much look forward to it. A little dipping of the donuts happening oh, yeah. in yeah. the right. in the syrup. Um, I do not have any live shows currently planned, okay. but I will definitely be. We well, didn't on have this that. two days ago. I know. So who knows what happens? Who knows who else yeah. I'll meet in the vestibule? Um, yeah, really, what I want people to know now is that if they are able to help and pre-order the record, it's going to actually help make the record. The record is mm -hmm. being made right mm -hmm. now, so. And spread the word too. If you're getting yes. it, also let your friends know. Both of them, both of your friends. I know you at least have a couple of friends yes. out there. Us parents, and lucky that you get one. Sort of goes out exponentially, right? Yes, it they does. They have two friends, and then they have two friends. And well, that's how it works. <laughs> or is that geometric? Uh, we're, we're, we'll stay in the There's music. another math, yeah. there's it's a mathematician that, named Lisa, Lisa Piccarillo, and that is not me. She's <laughs> definitely not related to Mr. Pickles. No. All right, well, will you be taking us out on uh, keyboards or guitar? Um, I'm going to take you out on guitar. Okay. So we're going to put this Myrtle back over Thank here. You. Thank you. Do you need these papers down here? The I think I'm all done Thank with you. the papers. Thank you. All right. One more time. Let's hear it for Miss Radiate herself. <laughs> Lisa Piccarillo. Thank you, sir. What a lovely series you have going oh, here. My here. It's a service to the community. <clears throat> That's not worthy of your ears. Let me just do a little zhuzh here. All right, this is the title track from my first record called Momentum. joke that it was my only happy song at the time, so enjoy it while it lasts. Now I think I've got a couple more. She's everyone you've ever seen, hang your portrait of a dream upon her shoulders, but can she hold it? Hey! 
tuning pedals dying on me so Thank you folks so much for coming out tonight. I really appreciate it. It feels so good to be in a room with people playing Yay! music for them. <laughs> um, thank you to everyone who's tuning in from home um, and supporting live music in whatever way you can, supporting indie music in whatever way you can. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Nathan. Give it up for Nathan right there, behind the scenes, making it, making it all happen. Um, this is a song about speaking your truth. This is going to be the last song from me tonight, and I really appreciate you being here, and I hope you'll check out the new record. Um, I can't wait to share it with you. Thank you so much.
Thank you and good night. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, audience. Thank you, viewership out there. The tens, if not dozens, of viewers out there <laughs> in video land. Thanks to Nathan. Uh, next week, we have Grace Crummer here with Ed Eastridge. She'll be doing a variety of jazz standards and I think maybe some original tunes. And then closing out Women's History Month will be Jess Raymond and her famous band, which includes me <laughs> and Ben Kogan. And there'll be some banjo a wizard back there too. So uh, again, thank you, Lisa. This was just a treat. Thank, thank you. you all. Um, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you.